Today we'll be solving this trigonometric equation. First of all, since we're looking for a solution among real numbers, and we see square root on the left, what it means that we want to make sure that whatever's under the square root is non-negative. And we can see that this is satisfied for any x because we, we have cosine square, which is non-negative, plus 3, which makes whatever is under square root no less than 3. So that part is satisfied. The second thing we need to look at is the fact that the left-hand side has a square root, which means the left-hand side cannot be negative, and therefore the right-hand side is also non-negative. And that condition we have to put out because we will have to enforce that. The next thing we're going to do, and this is a typical way of solving equations with square roots, is square it. To get rid of the square root, if we square a left-hand side and right-hand side, this is what we're going to get. So we're going to move whatever's on the left, on the right, and combine like terms. That's what we're going to get. And the next thing we see here is that we have three terms that have sines and cosines, and one term, the last one, has nothing of that kind. And that's kind of not very convenient for us. We would like to have all terms to have sines and cosines. But there is an easy fix for that. If we remember this formula, that sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1, we can apply this formula to the last term. That's what we're going to have. And again, open the parentheses, combine like terms, and that's the equation we're going to get. It only has sines and cosines. The next thing uh, we would like to do is to divide this equation by cosine squared. But before we do this, we want to make sure that cosine is not zero. And if you look at the equation right here, we see that, yes, cosine x equals to 0 is not a solution for this equation. And that's because if you say cosine equals to 0, the last two terms go to 0. Now, remember this formula. We talked about it before. When cosine goes to 0, sine squared has to be 1. So this guy becomes minus 8 third, and that should be equal to 0. That doesn't happen. So we are confident that cosine x is not 0, and we can divide by cosine squared this equation. If we do, we get an equation like this. Now remember that sine over cosine is tangent. And now notice what we have here is really quadratic equation with respect to tangent. And we know how to solve quadratic equation. Just to remind you, if I have a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, where a, b, and c are constants, we have two solutions that could be expressed using this formula. In our case, in this particular equation, tangent x plays the role of x. a is minus 8 third, b is 2 square root of 3, and c is 2. If we plug that in this formula, we find there are two values for tangent. One value is tangent equals to square root of 3, and the other is minus 4 over square root of 3. So one thing uh, to remind ourselves that although sine and cosine are limited between minus 1 and 1, tangent does not have any limitations. Tangent will change from minus infinity to plus infinity. So both of these values provide certain values of x. So let's start with tangent x equals to square root of 3. So to understand what x could be, let's get a unit circle. The next thing we need to remember that the vertical axis is a sine, horizontal axis is cosine, but this vertical axis that goes through the point 1, 0 is actually a tangent axis. 0 of the tangent axis is at the point of intersection of its horizontal axis. And the values up are positive, values down are negative. 
And when we are looking for tangent x equal to square root of 3, we are looking for a line or for the angle that gives us a line, yellow line that intersects the red line at the points equals to square root of 3 at point A. Now the smallest and absolute value of the angle that gives us tangent equals to square root of 3 is pi over 3 or 60 degrees. Now we know that from the geometry, from the study of triangles, and I have a link to a video that discusses that fact. Now, but in addition to this angle, also any other angle that puts us on the same line is going to give us tangent equals to square root of 3. In particular, angle like this, pi over 3 plus pi. We're going to land here and that still give us the same tangent. And now actually if you start adding or subtracting any number of pi's, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi and so on, we also going to land on this line and we're also going to get the tangent equal to square root of 3. So the solution that gives us tangent equals to square root of 3 is x equals to pi over 3 plus pi n where m is any integer. All right, but this is the solution of this equation. It is not necessarily a solution of the original equation, because for the original equation, we also need to satisfy this inequality right here. And what we really need to see now is which angles out of this range out of these angles satisfy this condition. So to see that what we see here is there are two possibilities. We have angles that give us point B and angles that give us point C. And when we talk about point B or the angles that give us point B, the sign of those angles will be vertical coordinate of point B cosine of the, those angles will be horizontal coordinate of point B. As you notice, for point B, both cosine and sine are positive. And if you see here, if sine is positive, cosine is positive, the sum is also positive, and we satisfy these conditions. So whenever we get an angle that gives us point B, we satisfy this condition, and those angles are fine for us. Now let's look at point C. For point C we see that both cosine and sine are negative. And what happens here? The first term is negative, then we're adding another negative term. So together again we get a negative number and we'll see this condition is not satisfied. So it means that any angle that gives us point C should be thrown away but any angle that gives us b should be kept. So what is point b? Point b is pi over 3 plus or minus any number of full circles, which is 2 pi. So the final answer here is x equals pi over 3 plus 2 pi m. Those angles satisfy both this equation, tangent x equals to square root of 3, and this inequality. Now let's consider Next angle, on next equation, tangent x equals minus 4 over square root of 3. Same story, we draw this yellow line that intersects a tangent axis at the point of minus 4 over square root of 3. Now, uh, all the angles that land us on this line are going to satisfy this condition. The smallest angle in absolute value that lands us on this yellow line is this angle. And this angle is denoted normally as arctangent of minus 4 over square root of 3. And the other notation for this would be inverse tangent of minus 4 over square root of 3. It's the same thing. Now, every other angle is really this angle plus or minus any number of pi's. So for example, this angle also brings us to the same line 
and this angle is also going to give us tangent of minus 4 over square root of 3. And the full solution will be really arctangent of minus 4 over square root of 3 plus any or minus any number of pi's. So again, as before, we would like to satisfy this condition. But now the story is a little bit more complicated. First of all, uh, the angles we need to consider is the angle that gives us point B and angle that gives us point C. And to look at this condition, we really need to look at the vertical and horizontal coordinates of points B and C. So let's start with point B. When we look at point B, we find that cosine of this point is positive and sine is negative. So since cosine is positive, we can divide this inequality by cosine, by positive number, and this inequality will hold. So we're going to get an expression like this, where we took into consideration that sine or cosine is tangent. Now we can subtract 3 from both parts of this inequality and multiply by square root of 3, and we're going to get this inequality. Now tangent x, as we know, is minus 4 over square root of 3. So it's easy to see that this inequality is actually satisfied. So point B will satisfy this inequality. Now let's consider point C. For point C, notice that sine is positive, but cosine is negative. So if I do the same trick and divide this inequality by cosine by a negative number, the inequality have to flip. Instead of greater or equal than, the inequality becomes less or equal than. Now, uh, again, we get tangent uh, less or equal than minus 3 or times square root of 3. And now, for this point to work, we have to satisfy this condition. But we previously show that really this condition is wrong. And whatever's on the left is actually strictly greater than whatever's on the right. And therefore, point C does not work for us. And axes that satisfy this equation and this inequality at the same time are the axes that produce this point B. Or in other words, it's arctangent of minus 4 over square root of 3 plus 2 pi n. Okay? The last thing I want to do is modify this arctangent. We have arctangent of minus 4 over square root of 3. Sometimes people don't like it. Uh, we can modify it by noticing that arctangent is actually odd function. And that means arctangent of minus y equals minus arctangent y, so minus can be pulled out from arctangent. So let's do that, and if we do that, we get the final answer here, okay? So we have two sets of solutions. One is here, one is here, that will satisfy this trigonometric equation.